Okay. Well, this one had, we had to go to five, but anyway, it's not too bad. Um, so blackboard test in five steps. Uh, and we're going to, let's talk with the big picture and then we'll come back around and talk about each of these things. But these five steps, you name that test and think of it as like creating a blank test that has a name. Then you're going to add your questions, say what the right answers are, say how many points. But that's all happening in, uh, in, in a Blackboard in an area called test surveys and pools. You're going to deploy the test where you want students to see it. And we're going to spend a little time there. There are dozens of test options. And we're going to talk about not every one of them, but a bunch of them. And then if you have questions about ones I didn't mention, just chime in. And then we'll talk about scoring uh, the items and so on. So that's the big picture. Let's uh, jump in. Uh, let's see. That is not what I wanted. What I wanted was, oh, am I going to have to, Adela, am I going to have to stop sharing every time I want a new screen in this? No. Okay. All right. So step one, you're going to create the blank test. So you start in course tools. So if you think about the, the you, you know, your Blackboard site, that black navigation panel over on the side, uh, there's that, that kind of workhorse button called course tools. When you click it, it opens up and it gives you about, oh, at least two dozen different utilities there. So you're gonna go to course tools, which is probably a place you often go. And then inside that there is test surveys and pools. And uh, you'll click there. Once you're there, um, the things that you'll select are set test and build test. They're pretty commonsensical. It asks you to, whether you want to test a survey or pool and you say you want to test. Um, so what you've done there is just created this little blank test. In a minute, we're going to go to the screen that you will be looking at. But before they do, we, we do that, I want to kind of alert you to something that is a pattern you'll see over and over in Blackboard. So if you're a relatively new user, it's worth noticing this explicitly. Uh, Blackboard uses a sort of must make convention. So often on a screen, there are one or two things that you must do. You know, you just can't move forward until you do. And then there, may, there are probably a bunch of things that you might do if you want, uh, optional things. Um, many of those I ignore, but I'll talk about my favorite maze that I think are useful. So must, you gotta do it, may, you can do it if you want. Here's the screen in question. Let's get your face out of here. So it's called test information. That's the screen that just opens up for you when you say, you know, when you, when you go to test surveys and pools and say you wanna create a test. So the yellow uh, arrow is pointing to the only must thing on that big crowded screen, which is the name of the test. It's marked by an orange asterisk. Every must item in Blackboard is marked that way. The other two things that you might want to do is a description. So if you're like me, you might forget the test three dealt with chapter 17. Uh, and you can put a little note of that there. Uh, and then the instructions are what you want students to read about taking the test. Uh, and that I think that's a good idea. You know, granted, it's... Um, pretty straightforward. Most students have taken tests in their lives. But, you know, it's nice to mention some of the things that might be unusual for them, like once you start, you got to complete it. So that's the test information screen. And when you submit it, you're going to be into part, step two. Susan? Yeah. Um, it's my impression that the students see both. They see it whether it's instructions or directions. Is that okay? And I really, right? I think that's right, but I am not exactly sure. You okay. know, in directions, I didn't want them to, in instructions, I didn't want them to see. But um, I gotcha. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's useful to tell them what chapters on the test. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. The second uh, step is kind of the heart of creating the test. This is where you put the questions into it. Uh, and so we'll look at the screen in a minute, but the first thing you do is from a drop down menu, you select the type of question that you want. Uh, it's gonna open up a blank version of that question and you get to write the item and indicate what the correct answer is. Before you leave that area, you're gonna assign points to the, each item. And if you forget to do it, you can go back and there's a place to do it later. 
but it's easier to kind of think, plan your test in advance and do it in the beginning. And then you just repeat that for each item, okay? Uh, so let's look at what that looks like. So here's the, here's the um, they call it the test canvas because that's the place where you create the actual test. And so over up here on the top where my yellow arrow is pointing on that ribbon up there, uh, the first tab, uh, create questions. And drop down, there are just tons and tons of different kinds of questions. We teach different disciplines, so we need different things. Uh, my personal favorites are um, uh, uh, multiple choice, multiple answer, uh, short answer, and um, I'll do a little bit of true and false. Uh, but again, you know, what you need is, uh, is what you need. Essays just give you a bigger block of text for them to write. Short answer, you know, think two or three sentences. And then I'll go through whenever I uh, hop in. And I'm just going to walk through and show you a couple of the different versions that I've just done in my classes. So then some of you can probably share things that I could probably do more fluidly, right? Um, okay. And things like that. So we can sort of have some good discussion. Do you want me to stop sharing? You want to do that now or you want to come in later? Oh. Either way, it's fine. I guess I, mean, I, guess I could just go through and, and start sharing my screen sure let me, sure. Let, me let me stop sharing and then she's going to show you what some of these tests uh these kinds of items look like okay so um i give uh, tests in two well in two types of literature classes so one is for a general um uh, we, everyone has to take world literature here and so for part of that uh, exam uh, over the, the summer I did 25 multiple choice questions and then two essay questions. Um, so I will go ahead and just share um, my screen for that one. Just making sure I brought up the, the right one. And so hopefully it it says preview, right? Midterm 2020, is that the right one? That's See, right, that's what we're looking at. Thank goodness. I don't know what else is on there on that desktop. <laughs> so you can see here, right, I just have, right, the, uh, the multiple choice questions. And then I do give the students a little bit of, right, and it has, right, as Susan mentioned, right, sort of three points for each one. Um, and then right, I sort of get to the end here. And then question 26, and this is the thing, right? Maybe some of you have a better way of doing this. I haven't been able to come up with one. Um, in a regular face-to-face -face, uh, class, I've usually given students three options. So you'll see, I still have one question that I think is really important. So I'm like, you have to answer this question. Question 27, where they are um, sort of going through and they're doing a close reading of a passage. So I have here zipped on a passage that's symbols, Im images, figurative language, and theme. They're doing all that in one passage for me, so they have to do that on my test. But question 26, right, I have choose one of the two essays below and answer the following uh, question. Craft your response in two to three paragraphs of at least five to seven sentences each, right? And so then they go through and they just choose one of them. And so this one's blended. And what's really nice, right, is that, right, as Susan mentioned, right, they automatically, my multiple choices are graded, which makes my life a lot easier, especially in the summertime. <laughs> and then, yeah. right, I just go through and I can sort of grade um, these, um, you know, and just give them, give them the points, which is, which is nice. Um, the other thing that I, I do, um, and I have this time, so I gave them an hour and a half for this one, um, and World Lit as well, because I want to sort of encourage the students to read is what I like to think of it as, right? I give them quizzes at the start of each of the, the classes. And so you'll see, right, I give them a time limit of 10 minutes. Um, and so, and usually this depends on the class. Sometimes it's five. It'll depend on if I give them five or, um, you know, five or 10 questions or however much it is. Veronica decides to die as a novel, so they get 10 minutes because I'm quizzing them on the whole novel. And then, right, they just go through the first part of class and we'll, we'll finish it um, in, in front of me. Um, 
This past Wednesday, um, I gave another type of exam, and I'll show you this one, in my American Literature Survey. And so, and this is one, I'm not sure if I did it in the best way possible. Um, I, I started out doing the identifications, which maybe Susan might have a better method of. Um, and I ended up deciding that was not the method for me, that it was getting too complicated. So maybe she'll be able to tell you how to do this in a better way. So I created a big essay. <laughs> um, and so I have here the instructions where they had to um, identify five of the following terms or concepts in a short explanation. And then they related it to, um, uh, so they did it's a definition and then they relate it to something that we've read together in class. So that's right, um, about two to four sentences I have here. And then I did the same thing at the bottom where I have right, a choice, um, and I've had a hard time, uh, in, so maybe some of you, right, I don't know how to give them a lot of choice in terms of the essays. I can do, if, if you're less concerned about giving the students choice, I think it's, it's really easy to set it up as I did on that first um, midterm where you just sort of have that one block. Um, but I write select three of the following questions and write an essay for each, right? And then I just have the question. Um, yeah, let's go back to your first one, Luella. I have like one idea on how you could get some choice in there. Uh, let's go all the way up so we can. All right, all right. Hold on, hold on. Move this over. And then I'll tell you how I administered the exam, which I think some of you may find helpful. Yeah. So that's that one where they had to pick, you know, pick. Yes, the picking one. You could tell I, did, I didn't know how to make them pick, and then I just sort of put my hands up in the air, I was like essay questions, I'll just give them choice one or choice two here. So we go to the bottom here. I'm sorry if that's making your eyes no. hurt. Everyone. No, that's okay. okay. Um, this, is, this isn't what I was talking about. It was the one where they had a whole list of terms. Oh, and they were okay, yes. Two. There, no. Yes, this one, this, yes. There was yeah. an identification yeah. section that I tried to figure yeah, out. That was, one, I think you could, um, what you could do is um, repeat that, um, repeat that blurb for each item. So call it a short answer item, repeat that blurb, and then, you know, in the, in the prompt say, choose one of these. Um, and then maybe on the first one, you say you will ultimately choose five. And then the second one, choose one of them. <laughs> Um, and that way, at least you're going to have the advantage of Blackboard is going to tally up the points yes. and it saves a little work that way. That is a better idea. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Anybody else got a better idea than that? Because, yes. I wish. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was changing uh, forms, but I had where uh, I'm teaching religious studies and I had a list of eight religions and they were to then take a list of statements and mat it wasn't really matching because it was not one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Um, and I found that it, uh, it worked because uh, they were able to go back and do it, but I, I had done it something like a matching, but put in so that it would work without it being a perfect one-on-one -on -one. and that, that was a lot of, instead of saying, um, write or be, be like fill in the blanks, this statement to whom does yeah. it belong, uh, doing it a matching way it worked up. Oh, that might yeah, I think that could work. And again, the way that I mentioned for Luella on this one could have worked in that option too, where you have all of your definitions and then for each item, they simply, you know, pick one. Um, right, I'm going to stop sharing and I'll let you go on, Susan. Okay, let's, yeah, we'll go back to my little, okay. Let's see if my screen is there. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's go find where we want to be. Um, okay, all right. So we created the questions. We've looked at different kinds of questions. 
Uh, now let's look at some of the things that you have to talk about when you create a question. And I, I did two of them. Um, there are lots of them. So my first one was a, was a true false question. You can tell I got roofing on my mind. Getting a new roof is a noisy process. <laughs> um, so this is the simple, uh, a true false is the simplest kind of item you can write and you have the least stuff down here to worry about. The first thing you have is something that shows up for every item, which is about how the answers will be oriented. The default is always vertical. I think it's what most people want. No, I never mess with it. But if you want to change it to horizontal, you could do that. The other thing you have to do in, in every question is indicate what the answer is. So in a true false, um, it's going to show you true and false. It always defaults to true. If you wanted it to be false, if it's really false, you just move the, the, the dot down. When you have uh, multiple choice items, it, it always defaults to A as the correct answer. And uh, which means put the correct answer in option A. It'll save you a little bit of work and then tell it later on to randomize the options. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated item. So this is a multiple answer item. So it looks like multiple choice, but they can choose more than one answer. Um, and let's look at some of this. So now we've got a new thing up here, answer numbering. So whenever you have multiple choice, uh, multiple answer, something that has a list of options for the answers, you can take them labeled. You can just have nothing, and you know, they just show up. You can number them with, you know, uh, uh, Roman numerals, Arabic numerals, uppercase, lowercase, whatever floats your boat. I just go with uppercase uh, letters. That vertical orientation, it's the default. It's still there. I never mess with it. Eilish, we're in the land of partial credit here. Yes. So uh, on a multiple answer item, or in your case, a matching, or an item where you ask people to put things in chronological order, uh, might be interested in giving partial credit for the part the parts they get right. That would have worked. Yeah. So you, all you do, well, you do two things. First thing you do here is you get partial credit. I don't click on the second thing. If you click there, it, Blackboard will uh, calculate this so that a student who's truly clueless is going to get not just zero, but a negative score. And that just seems a little bit over the top to me. So I, I don't do that. Um, and then um, show answer, answers in random order. I always do that for multiple choice, multiple answer, so that uh, you know, Emily's uh, option, answer A, is Jorge's uh, answer D. And it just keeps everybody, it helps with um, the test integrity. It's no guarantee, but it's, it's one thing to do. Also, it means that you can always put your right answer in A, and then you randomize the answers. You don't have a pattern on your test where it's A, 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 A. So also as a way to save yourself a little work. Now, take a look at the little yellow arrow. When you come down here, there's a little uh, message that says update partial credit. And what that means is uh, Blackboard wants to do the math for you. So let's say I have an item here where there were four options, two of them are correct. It's a 10 point item. Uh, if I click there, it's gonna, Blackboard is gonna tell itself, oh, every correct answer gets five points. Or let's say I had five, I, you know, I, I, five options and three were right, it's a 10 point item. I click there, it's going to give it 30, you know, 3.33, 3.33, and 3.34. So you don't have to do that math. Um, and if you forget to do it, which I almost always do, uh, Blackboard will not let you go on. They'll get a little prompt that says update, uh, update partial credit. And, you know, then you click on it and all is forgiven. Um, but again, the more complex your item is, the more things you have down here to, to take a look at. Okay, let's go to step three. And this is, I think, where things, um, it's not hard, but it's different than what we expect to do. So this is where we deploy the test. And you know, that language is a little militaristic, but anyway, it is their, it is their language. And the first thing to keep in mind is that you put the test, you deploy the test in the place where students will see it. 
And if you've already been posting things like handouts or web links or so on, you're actually familiar with this pattern. You know, let's say you're going to put your, you've got a handout that you want to put up and you've got a folder that says handouts. You go to the folder that says handouts and you click build content. This is a very similar thing. You go to whatever place you want that test to show up. Uh, and that's your starting point. You're not starting your vision tools. Once you're in that area, you click up that little ribbon at the top. You're probably used to already going to build content if you want to add like a handout or a PowerPoint. But you pass that by. and You go to the tab that says assessments. In Blackboard, um, anything that students return to you is an assessment. So if it's, a hand, if it's a, an assignment, it's an assessment. If it's a test, it's an assessment. If it's a survey, it's an assessment. They all come back to you. And assessments have their own tab. Hey, Susan, if you want, I can, if you want, I can, share, I can share my screen again and we can- Yeah, sure, let me stop sharing. Okay, it's all you. All right. So I set up everything in weekly modules, right? So in last week, right, I gave the, uh, the exam, right? So you'll see here, right? I had um, right, the units, weeks, modules, and this is right, week seven. Um, and then, sorry, everything's a little. And so if you just go to, this is my assessment area, right? So you just click test here. Mm -hmm. And then, Right, you would just create new test. You can do that. I'm going to show them the other way. I'm going oh, to. Okay, well, this is not Susan's way. This is. This is Luella's way. Okay, way. okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Susan. <laughs> All right, Luella's going to wait until Susan's done with her PowerPoint now. <laughs> Luella, back, back up, would you? Uh, so, so cancel that and back up and let's look. So what I'm going to show you how to do is in this second little box where it yeah. says select an existing test. You already created that test for you over there in test surveys and pools. And so you just click it and you say submit. Okay. Now you can also create a test right in the content area. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I learned how to do it the other way first, so that way it seems best to me. Um, I don't know if it really is best. And I think you have a little bit more editing control if you do it in test surveys and pools, but that may be fantasy stuff. But, you know, truth in, truth in presenting, there are two ways to do it. You can create oh, sorry. this area. Um, I have a question. It. Yeah. Okay, so I want to use the same quiz in three different sections. Uh, so that means I have to uh, write the quiz three different times. Is there a way around that? I think there is. Adela, can you answer that question? I'm sorry, what was the question again? She's got three sections of the same course. She wants them all to take the same quiz. How can she avoid writing that quiz three times? Um, you can uh, uh, export your test to your other courses. You can. How do you do that? Um, you can actually export all of your tests from one course to another one. Um, you would go to packages and utilities. Why don't you scroll on down to that, Luella? You can do that in the, um, the course tools. Oh, I can't use this because it's somebody else's screen. Um, but you can do it right where Luella was. Um, and, and if you make the test there, instead of within the class itself, um, you just... When you say make the test there, you mean in test surveys and pools? Yes, yes. And okay. it'll just be added to the test selections that you've got there. And then you, you save to export it, and it'll save it to a zip file that you can save wherever you want to go to find it. And then you pick, you import the zip file from, um, from your desktop or 
wherever it is, in downloads folder, wherever. You want to okay, see so that's option one. Adela, how about you? What were you going to say? Um, that's probably the best way. Um, if you go to open up course tools. Okay, course tools. Yeah. And then go scroll down to test surveys and pools. Yeah, you might as well do it there since you're used to going there or you're shortly to be used to it. Okay. So mouse over exam one literature and click the button. Yeah, just click the button. Export. There's export right there. So it'll give you a package that you can download. And then when you go to the course you want to put it in, see that import test button at the top of the window of the page. You would click there and it'll ask, it'll ask you to import the file. Okay, that's pretty slick. Okay, shall we go back to the, the PowerPoint? Yes, I'm stopping my share. I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna slow you down, Susan. <laughs> no, you're not slowing me down. This is just how we talked about doing it, so. And then let me share. And actually, this is what I want to share. Okay. So you deploy where you want to see it. You use the assessment tab. Use an existing test. And now we know all kinds of fancy things about importing and exporting tests. And then we have to make the test available. Let's look at what the screen looks like. Oops. Just because I want to, I want to beat this to death. This is these were the places I made ninety nine percent of my mistakes when I was a beginner. I would forget that I had to begin in the content area, so I'd be clicking around in test surveys and pools, and I couldn't figure out what to do, and I would get mad. So I'm going to share save you that from that. Uh, and sometimes I would remember to go to the content area, but I was used to going to build content instead of the assessments tab, so I'd be in the wrong tab and I couldn't find anything that would help me with the test. So remember, you're going to the content area even though you're thinking about a test, and you go to the assessments tab even though you're used to going to build content. Okay, and then here's kind of what that screen looks like, but we've seen that already in, a, in Luella's world, so we can just kind of move on past that, I think. Okay. We've been talking about creating the test. Now we're going to move into um, administering the test. And um, deploying it is the first part. But the, the second part of it is selecting options for administering the test. And somebody started with a question about that. And I spent a long time thinking about how to present this. So you know, you'll have to give me some feedback on whether I've made good or bad choices here. Uh, so this is part of deploying a test. It is the same screen we've showed you before. And if you wanted to, if you were a glutton for punishment, you could scroll down three, four, five screens before you got to the end of all those options. There are dozens of options. Um, and, you know, that involves lots of scrolling. None of them are particularly hard in terms of, well, click here, click there, you know, check or uncheck. Uh, what's challenging, I think, is understanding what some of those options mean and uh, also just not getting overwhelmed with so much stuff that you could do. So what I decided we might do is rather than click through those endless lists of options, let's look at three kind of um, testing scenarios and um, talk about what are Certainly not the only options, but typical options for that scenario. So first scenario is given a little quiz in class during a, you know, in a Zoom session. So you are digitally face to face. You're all working together at the same time. This is pretty close to giving a little quiz at the beginning of, you know, of a face to face class. Um, and these are very common options here and let's kind of talk through them i'm gonna susan if you want me to i can share yes with the options or not do you want me to share it again if you want me to i can share the screen with the options i have it up so so you can see like where the randomized questions not but I, why don't we go let's go through the three scenarios and then let's go back and then let's okay. do exactly that okay 
So these show up pretty much in the order they appear in that endless scroll down. The very first thing is make available. Forced completion means they have, once they start it, they have to finish it. There's no start and stop business. The third one I really like for this kind of uh, online situation, uh, where you can set a timer. So um, my rule of thumb is I take my own quiz and I double the time. So if it took me five minutes, I give them 10. Um, so uh, set your timer, they will see that. And then underneath there, there's a little extra option that says auto submit. When the time's up, their paper gets submitted. And again, in this kind of, you know, in a Zoom session where it's awkward, both socially and even just technologically, to deal with a student who keeps working, keeps working when you're ready to go on to class, this just takes care of it. You know, 10 minutes is up, in goes your paper. Um, and those are things we would handle easily in a face-to-face -face issue. We'd walk around, we'd give the hairy eyebrow, we would, um, you know, simply pick up a test, whatever. All in one presentation, that means um, they see the whole quiz at once. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, if I were given a quiz, I'd give them a piece of paper, it would have all the items, that would be fine. Uh, so that's the default option. It's a very common option. We might uh, have Adele in a little while talk about uh, other variations on that theme. Um, and then finally, uh, I would randomize the questions. So not only are the option answers randomized, but so are the questions. So Luella's question number one might be Alicia's question number seven. Uh, and again, that makes it more complicated to consult with each other on quizzes. Uh, also, you know, you kind of want to move this thing along. Um, so uh, set the timer for something you think is enough time, but not a lot of extra time, you know, not time for, for, for mischief making. Uh, now, on this one, actually, I might, um, I might wait until I'm standing in the classroom to make it available. Um, but other, but I put that first because it's the order in which they appear. Let's do a second one. So this is an asynchronous course. This is how I'm teaching this semester. So they're going to be taking this on their own time. Uh, I have perhaps a little bigger issues about test security. Uh, Luella is going to talk to us later about some slick things she has done. Um, but again, let's start with make available. Um, and then underneath, right underneath that is generate an announcement. And yeah, I wanted to, I want an announcement to go up saying, ah, there's a new test, got to, got to take it. Um, I do force completion. I do the auto, the timer with the auto submit. I also use the little calendars. So there's a display before, display after calendar. Uh, so display after says, okay, from this point on, you know, starting right now, this test will be available and it will be available to whatever day and time I set on the dis display before. So it begins after, after this moment it's available to, oops, one second before this other time I have set. It's, you know, you're setting a window when the thing is available. Um, I also, even though it's over the top, I set a due date and I just make sure it matches exactly what the before day in time is on the calendar. Um, may, may I ask there, Susan? Yeah. Um, on the uh, make, can you make available now for your 8 a.m. class tomorrow uh, if you do the display as, as of 8 a.m. tomorrow, or how do you, how do you work on that? I think that is true, yes. So that you can make it available, but it doesn't appear for them. Oh, until okay. they apply. And uh, uh, Luella's nodding her head enthusiastically. <laughs> I got that right? Oh, yeah, thank you. Certainly okay. Can. And I, yeah. I often do that with my classes. And for my, my exam that I gave last week, I made it available right at noon, and then I stopped it at, at right in, an hour and a half. So I stopped it at 1.30. So whether I was there or not, it would have been available at noon and stopped at 1.30. And then right, it's, if I, I could have done it at 7 a.m. had I not been a nice person, right? Um, but for, <laughs> for my Monday classes, they do, they start at eight. And so they often have assignments that will go at 8 a.m. or quizzes that will start, you know, from eight to 8.10. But that would yeah. be under the display after. 
Uh, is that right? Display after is the moment that the test begins being available. Okay. Display before is the moment that the, the test stops being okay. available. Terminology so is cumbersome, if, but. If I always use display after, that means I can always make available and it, I'm not missing anything there. That's right? true, you could, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, and on, on my, my previous scenario when you're walking into class, that would probably be a slicker way to do it than what I, was, that I, what I have been doing. Hey, Susan? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, what about for the student that has accommodations and needs longer time? There is one of the options, I didn't talk about it, but there's an exempt option. So you can set what you want for everybody, and then there's a place to exempt particular people from those requirements. Okay, so you can add a single user to that under test availability exceptions? Yes, it's called exceptions. And when, when Luella takes us on a scroll, uh, we can make sure we pause there and kind of look at that a little bit. Okay, but thank you. Set up what you want for the class as a whole. And if you have somebody who has accommodations, they, they, uh, you put their name in the exceptions area and, and you are able to do things differently for them. Um, let's see, uh, the other thing is I set a due date. And again, often because that due dates show up on their calendars and they need all the help they can to stay up with an asynchronous course. Um, feedback, these are personal choices. Um, you, they gives you two options. What is when you want to give feedback? Uh, and so, um, in this scenario, I don't give it and I don't let, I don't give them any feedback until the last time that the test was available. So if this test was done on Tuesdays at four, Tuesday at four o'clock, then at Tuesday at 401, they can start getting feedback if they want. They have to go back in and look for it. The other thing about feedback is what kind of feedback do you want to give? And there are a whole range of those. Uh, in this environment, I would just tell them what they got wrong. And how do you, um, how did they access the feedback? Uh, I think they just click on it. They just click, I think when they click on their test a second time, then they can see the feedback. But they would have to go in and look at their test. Yeah, I have about 50% that figured it out and the other 50 can't. And one student emailed me directions and they seemed quite cumbersome. Okay, well, email, forward that email to me and maybe I can put it into clearer prose and share it with everybody, okay? Great, thank you. Hi, sure. hi this is Yvonne. I also want to make a point about that, that um, I, I like to do the feedback after the quiz or the test is complete. Mm-hmm. Um, just to avoid any exactly, you know, so just to kind of mention that as well. Um, yeah, and I don't after make anything the, available till after the deadline of the de and even then, um, you know, some in some cases, I'll just if I'm gonna, I'll just ask the students to let me know and I'll release it for a short period of time to them individually. I'll mm -hmm. open it up and then I'll and I'll go back because not all the students will look at that. And the other, I typically don't use the Blackboard feedback much. What I do is I look at the test as a whole. I write a quick little uh, Word document. These were the areas where, you know, where people had the most difficulty. Uh, and I might put some asterisks by things that are going to come, come back again. Um, and I just put that in the announcements because um, that's really easy for them to find. But uh, again, lots of ways to do it. I kind of use mine as a, as a, uh, them to look at the feedback. Mm -hmm. So I have a little quiz where they have to answer questions like, what would you do differently? Yeah, that's a great idea because again, one of the, one of the things that's real consistent in the research is that, well, first of all, it's difficult to, students say they value feedback. They are so, so on reading it and pretty bad at applying it. Uh, so, you know, applying feedback is the weak link. So anything you can do, like, what are you gonna do differently next time is a really good idea. That's kind of what's, you know, behind a, a, a lot of kind of study skills things is focusing on that place, that link between the feedback and the next piece of action. Okay, third scenario. So this is a, um, this is an ungraded event. So this is a review activity. 
Uh, and this is inspired by um, a really nice body of research that's been coming out in the last 10 years on what's called the testing effect. We are used to thinking about tests as assessments, as are our students. Um, but what this research is telling us is that taking a test is an extremely effective way to study. So one way to think about testing is to think of it as a learning moment as well. Uh, and you know, it's really a shame to have to do your learning when you're gonna get the grade. Um, so one, uh, one nice thing to do um, is, uh, create a practice test and um, it's an ungraded event. You make it available, you add the announcement. Uh, one of the things that were different is you might click off the allow multiple attempts. And in my case, I would allow unlimited multiple attempts because I want them to do it. I'm gonna keep the calendar. Uh, the default in Blackboard is that test scores are always included in the grade calculations and I would uncheck this because I want this to be an ungraded event. I'm going to give the feedback right away. So as soon as they submit, they get feedback. And I'm going to check off instructor's feedback. Now, sometimes it's going to be a little generic stuff. If they got the right answer, it might, I might say good. And if they got the wrong answer, they might say, oops. Um, but there'll probably be, you know, 10, 15% of those items that deal with tricky stuff. And so when they get it wrong, I will do a little, you know, the feedback might be a one sentence thing that makes the key distinction, sends them back to a particular piece in the, in the textbook or something. I wouldn't do that for every item. I'd pick my moments. But again, this is a place where that test is a learning moment. I have a quick question. Sure. Okay. Uh, scenario three, review activity. So it is going to be under which category is it going to be? It doesn't uh, matter what category. It doesn't matter. Because it's, it's not in the grade ca calculations. So you don't okay. have to worry about a category. Okay. So, so create, you know, in the beginning, create assignment? No. But what kind of uh, categories oh, were that, available? Not the test, right? Yes, it is a test. It is a test. It is a test. You create a test uh -huh. just like you would before. Uh, so the review activity is quizzing yourself. And what oh. makes it different is that it doesn't count in the grade. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. Okay. How about if I want to, you know, give them a small points to do review activity. Okay. I mean, there are a couple ways to do it. One would be to make... Okay, here's what I would do, but you know, I would simply, anybody who did that, and you will see their scores in your grade sheet. Anybody who did it, I might throw uh, an extra point or two on their actual test. Because oh, yeah, I see. to me, it would be pretty cumbersome to actually court calculate, you know, attach the score to that. So I would just add a little extra. If I've got an extra credit column, I might put uh -huh. it in there. If I've got a daily work column, I might put it in there. I might say, oh, well, you know, anybody who completes the review activity at uh -huh. least once, I'll give you two extra points on your final test. So uh -huh. different ways to do it, but probably all indirect are the easiest. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I, I have a question. Why isn't, uh, why it does not show up in the grade book as a, as a grade? I don't understand. It's a I test. Well, because I have chosen to give them a test that is nothing more than a study tool. We can, I can click on that in the, yes, one of my choices, one of my options. Okay. okay. You can click on that. And so they can practice taking, quizzing themselves, and it has no impact on their grade. You will see their little score in the grade column, but it isn't being calculated. Okay. Luella, were you going to show us the, uh, we're going to give us the cruise of the options? Oh, sure. I mean, I'll stop sharing and you can, you know, we can kind of do a real quick run through. So here are the test options. I feel like I should have made the color snazzier now that I'm showing it for all of you, but I went with the basic option there. Um, I do too. <laughs> Um, 
It's right. It's available to students. Um, I did not do what Susan does. I did not make a new announcement. I was there with them, which I'll tell you about. I just warned them about it. Um, um, I didn't allow multiple attempts for this one, but you could, right? And you could mm -hmm. also sure. right, do the number of attempts. Um, uh, right? You can force the completion after a certain time. Right, I set a timer for 85 minutes. I was being very generous, I felt like, by giving them 85 minutes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was, boom, right, sometimes they're late. Um, auto submit, right, I, I turned that off. And then, right, I had um, uh, from 12 to, to 4.30. Um, and then we had some questions about, um, right, what do you do if you have, right, some exceptions, right? So you can do that here, you can add, right? Exemptions. Yeah. And then you have, I didn't add um, a due date because I had the, I mean, I had it here. So yeah. I didn't feel the need to add a due date, but I, I guess you, you could, right? But I only had it for this, this small amount of time. Um, and then, right, I did it. But you, mine was an essay question, question. Mine was the essay test that I showed you before. Mm -hmm. So on this one, right? they're not getting a score anyway. So I didn't um, answer this, but this is how you would yeah. sort of make those decisions. Um, and then the test presentation all at once, one at a time prohibit backtracking or randomized questions. I chose all at once for that essay one because some students prefer to get their longer essays out of the way first, right? Um, because they're worth more. Some students prefer the other way um, for the, um, for the ones where I do the multiple choice, right? I will, you know, do it sort of one at a time sometimes. So yeah, I let's... always randomize for, for multiple choice. And I randomize the answers too. Randomizing the answers though um, only appears once you do each, as you make each question. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a tiny bit about the prohibit backtracking business. My understanding of that is that that kind of mimics what students might confront in, in a number of uh, online certification exams where they only see one item at a time and once you've seen it you never get another chance to it uh, and I would think that people who would choose this are helping to prep students for that kind of experience but maybe somebody who has more experience with that um, would know I would say the general one here is is the default option that's what most of us would do and again you don't if this is uh, you know you can also randomize the items so for um, cheating, if yes. you make the questions go in a different order and you only let them look at one at a time, then the whole class isn't able to look at the same question. So that's another use of it. That, that could be another use, yeah. Okay, and Michael is saying exactly the same thing in the chat. So um, yeah, um, that is, and again, people have had, um, not always happy experiences with respondus. There are some, um, you know, techie issues or the equipment students have to have if the Wi-Fi isn't perfect. So sometimes we want to need some of these other workarounds. Okay, let's go back to my screen. And we've kind of talked about this. Okay, last, last step is to take a look at your uh, test in the grade book. So again, you're moving places. You start in uh, course tools, test surveys and pools, then you go to the content area, and now you're going to the grade center. Uh, so you go to the appropriate column. Every student who has uh, completed the test, you'll see a yellow circle. Next to the circle, you got a little, little uh, chevron, that action button, and there's a view option. And you click view there, and then you got to click view at the top of the screen. It's a little cumbersome, but just it's view, view, and then you'll be looking at their test. If you need to score some items by hand, you're in there, so you can read those short answers or the essays or whatever. Um, uh, you can also, you know, like as Elise, you know, when she found out that uh, when she did a matching thing, you had to be perfect or you got a zero, you can override any, any scoring that Blackboard does. Uh, and then you move on to the next student. Um, again, you might want to think about that business about how much time you want to invest in scoring. Um, 
you know, sometimes really all you're interested in is let's encourage them to do their reading. Uh, and it's fine that you just create items that they don't have to, that you don't have to score. I have absolutely no uh, success in using fill in the blank that way, no matter how many options I think I can think of that would be correct. Some enterprising student thinks of one more. So, an unsuccessful, a few unsuccessful those quizzes and no longer try fill in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, but I, I used to feel a little guilty about doing at least some of my, my uh, quizzes were um, things that I didn't have to really look at much, except maybe get the general lay of the land. But I have given that, that guilt up because um, that testing effect research tells me very convincingly they are benefiting from the, from the act of answering questions. And so that doesn't have to be held off hostage to my ability to do all this reading and scoring and grading. So I do do some short answers on some quizzes, but I try to kind of be a little strategic about it. If I'm going in, I might do two or three short answer th questions. Um, uh, but then I might have some where I'm giving myself a holiday today and it's all going to be machine scorable. Um, so, you know, think a little bit about that. And uh, my advice to you is give up the guilt. Okay, the grade center is going to look like this. I took my students' names out in honor of FERPA. But as you can see, there are the little yellow dots. Here's some things that have been scored. Um, here's the chevron so that when I, if I wanted to look at this student's work, click here. There's a view option. And then the next screen is going to take me to another view up there. Why you have to click view twice, I do not understand. Adela, you could probably clear that up for us. Um, okay, here's the, here's the big finish. So here are our five steps again. I hope they feel familiar now. You're going to name that test in test surveys and pools. You're going to write the questions in test surveys and pools. There are a few little options that you have for individual test items there. You go to your content area to deploy that test. So you put it where you want them to see it. Part of that, op that whole process is going to be selecting options. And there are dozens and dozens of possibilities. So think a little bit about, you know, try to visualize what you want this testing experience to look like before you go in there and see all those things to check. And then it's time to either score or view the results. So questions. Oh, and I did want to give you um, uh, one more tip that I used for my exam last week. Um, yeah. So, so I actually had, I didn't use Respondus. I don't know if anyone has used Respondus, but I'm very worried about my, um, my survey of American literature students, I really want them to know some terms and I really want them to know certain dates. I mean, my students do not know that the American Revolution was in 1776 every year. Like it just, it, it kills my heart, right? I want them to leave knowing like certain dates. I tell them they, they don't have to know every date, but they have to know at least broad centuries, right? This, so I, so they have the to leave it with certain I things. They have to know <laughs> certain things. They have to know when the Civil War was, right? They, so, so, so certain things. Yeah. Got so, so, but I, even before I decided to, I told them, right, they're going to have a traditional exam, right? Like the one that I showed you. And I began getting these emails with students very worried about Respondus um, and how, how it had functioned in other classes. Um, so I emailed, um, right, our testing services coordinator, Michael Gonzalez, and he said that he would simply act as a service, like a, as a, as I, I, I don't know what this kind of administrator, I guess, who would sit in the class. What is it called? Yes, a proctor. Thank you, Susan. That is it. So he would just act as a proctor. So he sent me a Zoom link um, and I sent it out to the students um, and we were both hosts and he looked at everything around them. He had some of them move like where their books were in proximity. He had a girl take off her or smart watch, things like that. Um, and they simply took the exam at the regular exam time um, while right, he was in the Zoom session, sort of watching over them during the exact time. And right, it is possible that they looked up certain things, right? I mean, I don't think that it's sort of a, a, perfect, uh, a perfect thing, right? But I think with sort of the synthesis of, right, the time frame and having, right, both myself and the the proctor there who are watching them as they were they were taking their exam i think that was really helpful so i wanted to make sure that you know that that is an option of course right it is not as good 
as a browser lockdown, but it is an, another option that I felt really sort of comfortable with for, for my purposes. Yeah, and you know, the, the literature is pretty clear cut that, that test construction is almost as important as the technology. Um, so you want a test that typically has some application and, and some higher order thinking, can't look those up as easily. Uh, you want um, a brisk time limit. So, you know, you, you don't want to have a whole lot of time to play around. I would rather have a few people not finish or even if no, you know, everybody was a little short of time. I can fix that by throwing three points on a test or something. I'd rather have it move right along. Um, and so th those issues are real important. The other thing, we didn't talk about it today, but if anybody's interested, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, there's a thing called a pool, you know, test surveys and pools. So you create not just an individual test, but a pool of questions. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a huge pool. And uh, you instruct Blackboard to randomly give them to the students. So like I typically have 10 point items and I make up tw uh, 10 point tests, I make up, most weeks, 10, 20 items. Sometimes I get by with a little less. Uh, and then uh, Blackboard randomly gives them um, uh, questions. So no student is getting exactly the same test. So they're getting a different assortment of items. And you got to be willing to work with a little bit of imperfection here, you know. Uh, every, you know, tests are in different orders, answers are in different options, it's higher order thinking, it's moving along pretty quickly. So those are all, you know, extra kinds of things. And then you email Michael and get an extra proctor. Um, or you might have, a, you know, you might have a buddy, you know, you help me, I'll help you. Um, Marianne, you had a question and I just didn't understand it. So you want to pose your question to the, to us again? Yes, I, you know, I've done quizzes. That was before, you know, we, and with, even with the Blackboard. But, um, but my question now with, with this, you know, now that everything is, is online, or at least that's what I'm mostly teaching. <clears throat> I wanted to do quizzes, but just to verify that people are actually reading the text. And so I'm not going to do, I mean, we, we, the book comes with a, a test bank, which, you know, I, I've looked at it, but I wanted to make my own questions, you know, quick questions, like a 10, mm -hmm. 10 multiple choice, nothing hard, just, just to make sure right. it highlights. So I was thinking of just giving them like maybe 20 minutes, you know, to, for multiple choice, 10 questions. And I was wondering if that was, would that be sufficient or am I cheating? Right. That would be a lot, I would think. I, mean, I think I that's a lot of time. content. So 20 minutes. So my students finish 10 questions, and I, I try to give, I give sort of cursory reading questions. I give them 10 minutes. They are generally done, and I, I dealt with Canvas last semester, and I don't know if Blackboard does this. Perhaps it does, but I dealt with Canvas last semester. It actually counts down how long it takes them. It generally took them two to three minutes tops to finish oh, okay. the questions for, okay. for and and see we're but having it's a new book can. so i don't know you know it's a new book i haven't really you know yeah i have to decide this weekend so i can start posting you know working putting the quizzes in and and uh and mm -hmm. so i part of me said ah with pandemic it's most of my adult our adults that you know they wait until everybody's asleep or whatever or or kids come in so I, that's why I thought 20, but you know, in my, naturally I would say, you know, between 10 to 12 minutes, that's what I was going to do. And I thought I'd be generous and give them 20, but yeah. that means my heart was right. I was right. Your so, heart so. was right. Yeah. And again, I think we want to kind of think about um, the kind of low stakes. Are they doing their reading things? Those don't need to be higher order thinking questions. Those are just, you know, you know, yeah, just simple. I mean, you know, just you know. baby stuff. But I mean, the, the exactly. actual reading, reading will be the supplemental journal articles that they have to do, uh, you know, written questions. And I'm, I'm implementing something called that synthetic writing, synthesized writing. So I wanted to try that on them. Yeah. The other thing is when you, you know, whenever I try something new, especially in a round assessment, I make the first one really low stakes. Uh -huh. Or in, you know, so it gives me a chance to make my mistakes in a way that I'm not going to have armed rebellion. 
So, you know, I might give a little extra credit quiz. We're going to try this out. And, you know, if it does, you know, something goes badly, it's real fixable. Nobody's mad. We're all happy. Uh, and, and it's kind of different because whereas you could be, uh, you could do Zoom, but this is all, I'm, I'm trying to make this all online so that, yeah. You know, we, we, they have the freedom to do come and go. Last of the term, this term, it was yeah. a little bit of Zoom and, and you could tell uh, how the students were, uh, you know, their experience, how they, they injected that experience into whatever we were talking. And so it's different when you're it just, you know, online. And, you know, I've used online quizzes long before the, um, you know, before the current unpleasantness. Uh, and I used them that they did them outside of class before we came to class. They, they disappeared in a puff of smoke 15 minutes before class be began. And they were exactly what Marianne was talking about. Very simple, did you do the reading kinds of things. They, they happened every single day. I would throw, it, Blackboard will throw away the bottom X number of items. So, you know, we'd have, I'd have them throw, Blackboard throw away the bottom two because I had dozens of these. And that way I didn't have to have arguments about, you know. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't, I see, I, I want to do away with that. I, I figured yeah. out, I get the, la the lowest one, I'll give you the highest grade for that, you know, whatever yes. you get on, on your quiz. And then yeah. uh, I'm more interested in their writing uh, questions okay. pertaining to the journal articles that we're going to carry it. Because I think those are the ones that will carry more weight yeah. for me. Well, I think our time is done. So again, thank you all very much for coming. If there are any lingering questions, send me an email and uh, it's good to see you. Is that a good- Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, had, I had one more, one more question for the group. Sure. Just, I can just, stay uh, on. How, how do you handle, uh, okay, so you set a timer, you set a due date or whatever, that, that comes and goes, and then you get the email from the student saying, you know, a comet struck my house on that day. Uh, can you can you make it available you, to them again through that? You can make the te you can make the test available again to the student. Okay, individually to that student through the acceptance. I'm pretty again? sure it's individually to that student. Adela, uh, you here? Okay. Yes. It, 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 you just, can you do that for just one student? Yes, it, it's the same as making an exemption. Okay. So okay. you would clear you would clear if you only gave them one attempt, you would clear that attempt and then give them. Make oh, that's easy. easy. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the grades would still stay, correct? Not if you clear an attempt. If you clear an attempt, whatever the grade was that that student made on that attempt, that disappears. Oh. Okay. Thank you. If I can just put in uh, two, two cents on this. Yeah, uh, remember when you assign points, uh, it does accept decimals. And so over the summer when Susan mentioned make the first two tests uh, kind of low stakes, I made it to where uh, each test was worth, or each question was worth five and a half points, something like that. So there were more than a hundred points available uh, to start them off so they can get a couple wrong and still earn something above a 90. So it's oh, another way to go nice low idea. stakes. Okay, yeah. Good idea. Good idea. And also I just wanted to say in, in uh, Blackboard, there is a place where it tells you how much, uh, how long a student spent yeah. on the question. Okay. So, okay. Excuse me, thank you. Uh, you okay, and I can stay on a few minutes if anybody else has a question, but feel free to depart. I know we are pushing right up against the, right past the time. Thank you, Susan. Thank and you, Susan. Luella, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye, thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Susan. Sorry, that's interjecting. <laughs> no, no, it's exactly what we planned. I, you know. Thank you, Luella. Hi. It's good to see everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, uh, Susan, can I show you something? Sure. Yeah.